بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام الحمد لله as we spoke of in the last khutbah it is good to make a resolution all the time not only because it's a new year but at any juncture any change in your life you should make a resolution for the better whenever something happens to another person for the good or bad it reminds you of a situation reminds you of death reminds you of life make a resolution change your life and we're encouraged to do this all the time now adding on to that resolution that we were talking about and that was leaving out sin last week i spoke about making a resolution for the new year that we leave out sin from our lives because it's very harmful we also discussed how sin can affect other people our sins personal sins that no one knows about will have an effect on the ummah because this is a spiritual thing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge this entire ummah by its constituents each one of us another thing we can add on to this something that we need to change in our life is the absolute foundation in our deen and the foundation of our islam in our deen in our relationship to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our sincerity to allah ikhlas and we know a surah that we all memorize perhaps maybe the second or third surah that everyone memorizes as a child the surah to ikhlas so we need to renew our sincerity and ikhlas to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inshallah that's what i'll be talking about today ikhlas scholars state in terms of the word ikhlas it's an arabic word it means purity it means to remove any kind of impurity so ikhlas literally means something pure this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us he wants a pure heart and when it comes to our usage of this word when we talk about ikhlas like we're talking about right now scholars say very simply put it's the removal of showing off in your actions the only individual that we show off to is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we are displaying our actions putting our actions on display for anyone other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this becomes the opposite of ikhlas this is what is termed as riya or showing off and there's a lot of uh, punishments prohibitions etc in islam regarding those who show up in fact rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam calls showing off a shirkul asghar the lesser shirk in greater shirk is that someone worships someone other than allah but lesser shirk the lower level of polytheism is to display your actions to someone else you're not worshiping others but you're displaying to others and you have made them the focal point of your intention so this is very harmful to our relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about musa alayhi salam surah maryam verse 51 wadhkur fil kitab musa speak of musa in the quran innahu kana mukhlasan wa kana rasulan nabiyya indeed he was mukhlas wa kana rasulan nabiyya he, he was a rasul a messenger he was also a prophet so there's a variation in the qira'ah here meaning there's different ways to recite quran as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in one recitation of quran which is the common form that we all recite it says innahu kana mukhlasan with the fatha and the lam in another variation of recitation of quran it's with the kasra and the lam innahu kana mukhlasan instead of mukhlasan these are very similar in the meaning but they have a difference so scholars state that a mukhlis is a person who displays ikhlas for allah all of their actions are done for the sake of allah that's a mukhlis and we use this term as well this is a mukhlis person he's a very sincere person it seems that all the actions they do are for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is called mukhlis mukhlas means he has been made sincere Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen that individual so in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about Musa alayhi salam he is both mukhlis and mukhlas meaning he is an individual that displayed his sincerity to Allah and he is also an individual that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen 
And another point that we can grasp from this is In the very beginning we must display that we are mukhlis You must display to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your sincerity And that is done by everything in your life being directed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Once you accomplish this Once a majority or everything in your life is for Allah Then you will become mukhlas Allah will choose you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate your status after that it's not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you a high maqam and high level just from the very beginning uh, without any effort from our side. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what we do. And when we pass several tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will then choose us and then He will give barakah and sustenance and ease in our lives. And this is when a person becomes mukhlas, very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Let's look at some definitions of ikhlas, how many scholars in the past looked at this term and all of their definitions are very similar but there's many lessons that we can grasp from them. So Imam al-Kafawi was a scholar who wrote a, wrote a book called Al-Kulniyat and in this book he talks about definitions and different fields of study in Islam. So he talks about fiqh, he talks about hadith and then he defines all of these terms. When it comes to ikhlas, he defines it as al-qasdu bil-ibada ila an ya'buda biha al-ma'buda wahdahu. This is ikhlas is when you intend to only please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your acts of worship. Your only intention, your sole focal point is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does this mean practically? For instance, you're performing salah. If you find yourself beautifying your salah more when you're in company, <coughs> then when you're alone and you find yourself when you're performing salah alone you're very you go through it very quickly you find it to be a burden you, you rush through it however when in jama'ah when with other people we're not talking about salah in jama'ah but like you are munfarid you're praying by yourself but people are watching you find yourself beautifying your salah even more this could be a sign that our ikhlas <laughs> is not complete because if I was doing it for Allah Allah never changes when I'm in public, Allah is watching me. And when I'm in solitude in my room at home, when no one's there, Allah is watching me as well. That same Allah never changes. So why does my action towards that same Allah change? It should not. This means there's, there's probably something in my ikhlas. Of course, I need to add the disclaimer and caveat that this is regarding that which you can control. Scholars have also stated that jama'ah, per performing salah together, has a spiritual effect. So yes, there are times when you're in jama'ah, you just feel better. That this is not brought on by yourselves. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't have to worry about that. Some people may feel, you know, when I'm in jama'ah, I just really feel close to Allah. That's a barakah from Allah. What I'm talking about is, if you can control your level of uh, conviction and your focus in salah, and you dial it down when you're alone and you increase that when people are watching there is an issue with our ikhlas if that is the case so this is what he, Imam al-Kafawi is saying ikhlas is to intend only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your acts of worship and it is also stated tasfiyatu sirri wal qawli wal amal cleaning up and making pure your heart your statements and your actions only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is in regards to everything in our life we find this greatly in sadaqat, in charity. When you and I are in a public environment and there's a fundraiser going on, or there's a, a capability of, of giving something in charity, we have to be very cautious at this time. Because we have to inspect inside our hearts what is happening. If we find other people donating great amounts of money, and I say, okay, I need to donate. Maybe we're not even thinking, but sometimes if you think deeply, is it to display that I am also among those who are giving? And do I display this type of charity for the sake of Allah when no one else is watching? If I find myself only donating when people are around and never donating when I'm alone, this could be a sign that my ikhlas is lacking. Now, this does not mean at all that we should not donate when a public call is being made for donation. Scholars state that for zakah, the fard zakah, it is good to do it openly because this causes an encouragement for others to give zakah openly. And when it comes to your secret nawafil, 
your sadaqat and your charities, it is good to give it secretly. So there are certain opportunities where you do give in public. What I'm saying is, if you find yourself always inclining towards public recognition, and very rarely that recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in solitude, that's something that we can question ourselves about. <coughs> Perhaps my ikhlas is lacking, and I need to work on that. And this is what we should be focusing on. Once we have ikhlas, we have a lot. And we'll get to some of those ahadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa praises those with ikhlas. Imam al-Munawi, rahimahullah, a great scholar of hadith, he says, Al-ikhlas huwa taqhlisu al-qalbi min kulli shawbin yakduru safa'u. Ikhlas is to remove any kind of filth from the heart that can prevent it from that sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anything you find in your heart that can prevent you from Allah and His recognition, this must be removed. This is ikhlas. This action of purifying the heart, polishing the heart, reserving it only for Allah, this is ikhlas. This is what we need. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Shaykh Ibrahim bin Adham, very famous Zahid, the person who used to leave out the dunya, he would only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, would, he used to be, as is mentioned in some narrations, he used to be a king, very wealthy. And he left everything for the sake of Allah. He said, Al-ikhlas Allah tutlabu li amalika shahidan ghayrullah. Ikhlas is that you do not want anyone to look at your actions except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't want anyone to see those actions. Some have even stated that ikhlas is when you hide your good actions just as you hide your sin. All of us want our sins to be hidden. This is one of the greatest fears that each one of us has that Allah will expose us. We all have some sin. This is, you know, reality. You won't find the word. None of us is a Nabi, a Siddiq, a Wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, may Allah make us. However, we have these sins. And it's a great fear that somehow these will be exposed. So he is saying here that ikhlas is that you hide those good deeds like you would hide those sins. Which one of us does that? Rather we find the opposite. As soon as I do something, I want recognition. I start looking for who can I show this action to. Maybe this is involuntary, but these are things that we have to be aware of. If my nafs and myself is doing this, why am I not aware of this? Am I not critiquing myself? You know, we critique others very greatly. We're great at, at critiquing others. When it comes to ourselves, we're not aware. So we need to start being cognizant of the actions that you and I are doing. Why am I displaying this? And social media does nothing to help this at all. We've created an environment in today's time where people display every single thing from great things, like, you know, they got a degree or something like that. They read a book. They've... Uh, you know, donated something. So even the smallest things, what they're wearing today, what food they had for lunch, what benefit is there in this? To display every single thing to public. And one thing that we're noticing is the more we display to others, the less we display to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like a choice. Allah's giving us a choice. You can either display your actions to Allah or you can display it to the public. And when we upload things, we're actually displaying to others. It's very harmful. I'm not saying that automatically you have no ikhlas if you upload something. It's possible to have ikhlas as well. But what I'm saying is very dangerous. And if we're not careful, we may be losing out. There's plenty of things that you and I do. If we have the correct intention and we do it solely for Allah, we get a lot of reward for it. But we're just not being aware of this. So we need to start focusing on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A shaykh Sahal al-Tustari, very famous... Zahid and, and, and an ascetic. He said, أَن تَكُونَ حَرَكَتُهُ وَسُكُونُهُ فِي سِرِّهِ وَعَلَانِيَتِهِ لِلَّهِ تَعَلَى وَحْدَ He says, all of your actions, your movements and your stillnesses, everything is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be it in solitude, be it openly, everything is for Allah. Every motion you make, that is ikhlas. لَا يُمَازِجُهُ شَيْءٌ لَا نَفْسٌ وَلَا هَوَى وَلَا دُنْيَا Nothing is mixed into those actions. Not your own desire, not your own desire for dunya, nothing is mixed into it. So if you do something only for Allah, that is ikhlas. So let us take stock of ourselves. How many times have I performed salah? But how many times did I have this attribute in my intention? That it was for nothing else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Sometimes you find yourself, you, you, you close the door, no one's watching, and you perform two rak'ahs very calmly, with a lot of khushur, with a lot of focus, reciting every single word properly, trying to keep your focus that Allah's watching me, inshallah that is ikhlas. But if we're rushing through our salah, we're rushing through these di different acts of worship, maybe there's an issue. Abu Uthman al-Maghribi, rahimahullah, he says, Al-ikhlas nisyanu ru'yati al-khalq bidawamin nadhari ila al-khaliq. Ikhlas, or the state of ikhlas, where a person becomes a mukhlis, is when a person forgets about the creation watching them, and they are cognizant and aware of the creator watching them. If you reach such a stage where you're aware that I am being watched by Allah, so much so that you forget about those around you, this is a state of ikhlas. This is also called ihsan, as we know the very famous hadith where Rasulullah defines ihsan, is that you worship Allah as if Allah can see you, or that you're aware that, as if you can see Allah, or you're aware that Allah sees you. This is ihsan. This is also ikhlas. That Allah is watching me and you're so aware and focused on this, that you start forgetting what's around you. This is when your ibadah is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that we have to work on. We're not born with these traits. Some people get it more easily. They're inclined towards Allah. And some of us have to put in a lot of effort for this. But nonetheless, this is what we were made for. And Allah will make it easy for you if you make that intention. Now, it was also said to the same scholar who said that previous statement, Sahal, rahimahullah. Someone asked him, Ayyu shay'in ashaddu ala nafs? What thing is the hardest for the self? Your individual self and what it wants. What's the most difficult thing for the self? He said, Al-ikhlas li'annahu laysa laha fihi nasib. The most difficult thing for your own self to bear is ikhlas because that's the one thing that the self cannot have. Ikhlas is that which you don't have. It's not for you. If we start taking from our ikhlas, that's not ikhlas. It's not for Allah anymore. It has to be only for Allah and you cannot get benefit from it. So if people are watching, if you're getting recognition from people, if people are speaking about you well, and you, you kind of have that intention, then you're taking away from what is belonging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to direct everything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the clothing that we wear, there's du'as, right? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has the masnoon du'as, how to wear the clothing. And when he puts on his clothes, he makes this du'a which displays how close he is to Allah, and that it is for Allah, he thanks Allah. He drinks, he has a sip of water, he thanks Allah. He eats food, he thanks Allah. His, his mind is always on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he's always thinking about Allah. This is ikhlas. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually warns us, ikhlas is not a choice. When you have accepted Islam, is, ikhlas is a necessity, it is fun. This is the foundation of Islam. If we don't have ikhlas, we have nothing. And how scary is it? How sad will it be? We've, we're doing all this a'mal, these good deeds. Alhamdulillah, this is tawfiq from Allah. Salah, zakah, sawm, hajj, all of these things. Alhamdulillah. But what if we appear before Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and He displays to us our actions and we see nothing? And we ask, oh Allah, you know, where's my salah? Where's my zakah? I did so much. I was 100 years of life. I performed so much. And we're told that today, you will only see the actions that had ikhlas. And you, had, you never had ikhlas. So you don't see any action. Nothing counted. So this is very fearful. Uh, something that we should have fear regarding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hud, مَنْ كَانُ يُرِيدُ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَةَهَا نُوَفِي إِلَيْهِمْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ فِيهَا وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يُبْخَسُونَ Those who wish the life of this dunya, they want recognition for their actions in dunya. They're not really thinking about the Akhirah, not really thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They want the beauties and the pleasures of dunya, that's their goal. Allah says, I will give that to them. Nuwafi ilayhim. We will give the, their, their actions, their goals, they will have it in full. Which is why we see disbelievers, kuffar, they have plenty. They have a lot, they have a lot of wealth. Believers also have a lot of wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, however, if you intend the dunya, Allah will give you whatever you intended in full. And you will not be deprived. They're not going to be, Allah is not going to be miserly with them. However, 
These people who only intend the dunya, they don't intend the akhirah. They want recognition for their salah, zakah, salam from others, not Allah. These will be the people in the fire. They will have nothing but fire in the akhirah. And the good deeds they did in the dunya will be erased. Allah is saying your deeds will be erased, whatever you did. Imagine going for hajj, how difficult it is. Imagine fasting the month of Ramadan in the summers. How difficult that is. Standing in various times throughout every single day, five times a day. We don't want that to be erased. Allah says, if they desire the dunya for that action, it will be erased. The actions that they did is batil, it's gone. Now of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is specifically talking about these kuffar in this verse. But this applies to believers as well. If we are displaying our actions for other people other than Allah, Allah doesn't need that. We're not doing a favor to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our actions. Allah doesn't need it. He's actually benefiting you and I. It's a benefit for us. So now if we start having a partner in our action with Allah, this is why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calls this shirk asghar. This is the lesser shirk. Because you're doing your amal, your salah, zakah, salam, all of these beautiful actions. You're, you're supposed to be for Allah, but you added someone else in there. You start beautifying your recitation more. Was it for Allah? What was it for? Was it to follow the sunnah? We're commanded to beautify our recitation. This is a very good thing, a noble trait, and you'll get a lot of reward for it. But what's the intention behind it? If I make my voice beautiful, do, will people come and praise me? Do I find myself when I'm, when I'm performing salah in jama'ah, I'm more focused on this beauty? When I'm alone reciting, then I'm just really quickly reading through the Qur'an. These are dangerous things for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants this purity for him. Now there's plenty of virtues and rewards for ikhlas. There's also a lot of prohibitions, a lot of commands and punishments for it as well. We're going to look at some of these inshallah to promote and motivate us inshallah that this new year we start on the right footing, we correct our foundation. And this is everything must be done for Allah. You are a Muslim. You are one who submits to Allah. The word Muslim, submitter. You and I submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah wants. What type of submission? Allah wants your money. Allah wants your health. Allah wants everything from you. This is what Allah wants. And what do you get in re return for that? You get Jannah. But you have to give everything for Allah. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so kind that He doesn't want 100%. Fard is 2.5% of anything extra. And anything more you can give, sadaqat, alhamdulillah. <coughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ From what Allah has given them, they, they take some of that and they, uh, they give. They give from what Allah has given. They don't have to give everything. Now Rasulullah <coughs> has praised ikhlas, he talked about ikhlas and what you get when you have ikhlas. The goal of every believer is to have Allah's pleasure. This is, this is why Allah made us. And this is what La ilaha illallah means. That I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be happy with me. I love Allah and I want Allah to love me. This is the goal of all believers. How can you have this? Simple. Have ikhlas. Anas radiallahu anhu states that Rasulullah sallallahu said, Man faraqad dunya ala al-ikhlas lillahi wahda la sharika lah wa aqama as-sala wa ata zakah if a person leaves the dunya, meaning they die, they leave the dunya, and they had ikhlas for Allah, meaning they knew that there is only one Allah, He is to be worshipped, and they directed all of their acts of worship to that one Allah. They performed salah and they gave zakah. Three things, ikhlas, salah, zakah. They will leave this dunya and Allah will be happy with them. Allah is pleased with them. Very simple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants this from us. Who is ready to give this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's simple to put in words. It's very difficult to put in actions. You have to really critique yourself. You have to sit there and think, what was that action for? And this is why scholars recommend every night before we go to sleep, instead of scrolling through our phones, instead of checking our messages and our email, etc., you do what's called muhasaba. And some may even have a journal for this. What is muhasaba? Muhasaba is taking stock of oneself. You look through your entire day. When did I wake up? Did I wake up for tahajjud? Did I wake up for fajr? Did I wake up after fajr? What did I do throughout the day? What were my actions? Did I get into an altercation, an argument with someone? 
What was the reason? Was I right in doing this? How was my salah throughout the day? Did I perform it with ikhlas, with, with care, or did I rush through it trying to get to my job? You inspect every facet of your day and you start thinking about it. And you start thinking about your ikhlas. Do I have ikhlas or not? And some say that if you did good that day, you say Alhamdulillah. All praises to Allah. And if you praise Allah for those actions, He will give you tawfiq to do more. And if you did something negative, and we have plenty of negative. Another thing is, if you don't see any negative in your day, then you're missing something. You have to look further. If you did something negative, something bad, you did a sin, it is the fuck. Allah forgive me for this. Give me tawfiq to stay away from this tomorrow. Every single night, if you observe this, you start noticing patterns, you start noticing things that you've done wrong, you start focusing before your ibadah, this is a very powerful tool. Muhasaba, taking stock of ourselves. Some have a journal for this. They write down what they've done. These are very good actions for us, highly recommended. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with us when we have ikhlas for him. In another hadith, when Mu'adh bin Jabal radiallahu anhu was being sent to Yemen as a governor for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him that I probably will not see you again. This is at the end of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life. He sends Mu'adh bin Jabal as a governor over Yemen to help the people over there. He was a great scholar. And these are the parting advices that he gave to Mu'adh radiallahu anhu. Part of that. Mu'adh radiallahu anhu said, Oh Rasulullah, give me some advice. And he's tearing up and he knows that I won't see him again. Final advices of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says very beautifully, Akhlis dinak yakfik al-amalul qaleel. Have ikhlas, O Mu'adh, small amount of actions will be enough for you. You don't have to do these long rak'ahs, you don't have to give everything you have in charity, you don't have to fast every single day. Just have ikhlas and do what's necessary, that's enough, yakfik. It's enough for you. These are parting advices of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa We should take stock of ourselves, we should ask ourselves, how can I add more ikhlas? This is the booster to your a'mal. How can I remove showing off from my actions? In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, and this is a really great benefit of ikhlas and why each one of us needs to have it. And we need to encourage each other. He says here that uh, Mus'ab bin Sa'ad, he says that his father thought that he had a great amount of virtue. His father was a Sahabi, Mus'ab bin Sa'ad. Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, he, he thought that you know he had a position. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said he's going to Jannah. So by the way, uh, so he started thinking that you know I'm someone. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Innama yansurullahu hadhi al-umma bi da'ifiha, bi da'watihim wa salatihim wa ikhlasihim. Don't think that you're something great. Yes, you've been promised Jannah, but you have to be humble. Understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will aid this ummah through the weak people in the ummah. Those who don't have Allah, those who are unknown, those who are not praised by society, those who don't have a lot of money, those who are looked down upon actually. Why these weak people? Why are they so good for the ummah? Notice Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Allah will give nusra, aid, and success to the ummah through the weak people. Due to their du'as, Allah readily accept their du'as. Their salah, it has a lot of ikhlas. Wa ikhlasihi, and they have a lot of ikhlas. So now think, there's so many weak people in our society that we're not even thinking about these people. They don't have money, they don't have much. They, they need help. We don't even know who they are. My brothers and sisters overseas going through so much. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will aid this ummah through them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will aid the ummah through us as well if you have ikhlas. Each one of us can change the situation of the ummah through ikhlas. This is how powerful it is. Last week I talked about the negative effect of sin. That by you sinning, you actually cause a damage to the entire ummah. The opposite is true regarding ikhlas. In this hadith he says, Allah will aid the ummah if you have ikhlas. And this is something no one needs to see. This is something that is a secret between you and Allah, but it boosts the entire ummah. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And inshallah, I'll finish with one more hadith and, and wrap up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, it's a, it's a warning from Allah, hadith Qudsi, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Ana khayru sharik. I am the best of shuraka, meaning if you make partners with Allah, there's no one that can match with Allah. Obviously. If someone is a polytheist, 
then and he has Allah here and he has you know some other idols. His idols cannot match up with Allah. فَمَنْ أَشْرَكَ مَعِي شَرِيكًا فَهُوَ لِشَرِيكِ If you decide in your action, your salah, zakah, song, qira'ah of Qur'an, whatever you're doing, you have Allah here that you want to please and you have someone else you want to please. It's in your intention. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, give it to that other person, I don't need it. I don't need it. You know, Allah's generous, let that other person have it. You want to display the beauty of your salah for this person and Allah? Then Allah says, let that person have it, I don't need it. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ya ayyuhal nas, akhlisu a'malakum. O oh, people, have ikhlas. He's warning people. Allah will throw away your actions if you don't have it. Just have ikhlas. This is the main thing that we need in Islam. After the shahada, ikhlas is absolutely necessary. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى لَا يَقْبَلُ مِنَ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَّا مَا خَلَصَ لَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only accept that which has ikhlas. If you start adding other stuff into your intentions, Allah won't accept that. Now, to be more clear, because many people will find, you know, what then was for Allah. If it's unintentional, inshallah, Allah can forgive that. If it's intentional, however, it's not there. Imagine that that salah didn't count. If it's intentional. You started praying and you see someone walk by and you're like, all right, I'm going to show this person. I'm going to do such a long raka'ah. Then until this person leaves the masjid, they'll just see me standing. I want to be like a pillar. I've heard stories about these great pious people in the past, that they used to be like pillars. There was this one story where this girl, she was saying, Oh Father, I walked by this person's house, and I saw that they knocked down one of their pillars. And he said, Oh my daughter, that's, that wasn't a pillar, that was this pious man, he died. Every night you see him standing, you thought he was a pillar. It was a pious man. So I want to be like that, I'm going to stand here for an hour and this, once this person leaves the masjid, I'll do my rukur. Don't think that that was for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Intentionally. Now if you made a mistake and you know, part of your niyyah starts slowly going towards someone, it's unintentional. Inshallah, you should beg Allah for forgiveness and He can accept that amal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, in, I know I said that that was the last hadith, this is a short hadith inshallah and we'll wrap up. Very beautiful Abu Huraira, he says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this is recorded by Imam Muslim, Inna Allah la yanzuru ila ajsamikum wa la ila suwarikum wa la kin yanzuru ila qulubikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your faces, your bodies, your wealth. He doesn't care what you look like. He doesn't care about how much money you make. He only cares about your heart and your good deeds. This is what Allah cares about. So the entirety of society, you and I, when we, when we wake up, what do we do? We go to our restroom, we look at ourselves in the mirror, we, we try to fix ourselves up. We go outside, we go to work. You don't want to look disheveled, you don't want to smell bad, you take a shower, you want to put on some kind of cologne, etc. You do this, why? Because you don't want to harm people and you want to attract people. You want to, be, you want to look good in the eyes of people. However, understand this is what people see. This is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares about. He cares about the condition of your heart and your actions. What care have we taken on a daily basis to beautify ourselves for Allah? If He's looking at your heart and He's looking at your actions and you want Allah to recognize you, what have you done to beautify those things? And so just as much as we beautify our outward, we only beautify our outward selves because Rasulullah tells us to. He was the, the practical example and He said to beautify yourself, so we should. You shouldn't come here smelling and stuff like that. He actually told people, don't come to the masjid if you've just eaten onions. I don't want to smell that. And you have to beautify yourself as well. However, more important than that is beautifying your inner side for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very quickly, how do we attain ikhlas? Number one, ikhlas is a result of your knowledge of Allah. If you don't know Allah, you're not going to have ikhlas. Learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His attributes. And one of the major attributes of Allah is that He sees everything. If you don't know this, that Allah is watching you at every single moment, you're not going to have a class. You're going to actually subconsciously think, I can get away with it. Most of the time when we sin, we're not thinking about Allah. But He's watching at that moment. And some scholars have recommended to recite this verse continuously throughout the day, because it aids in this. أَلَمْ يَعْلَمْ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَرَى Surah Al-Alaq أَلَمْ يَعْلَمْ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَرَى or you can say in English, does he not know that Allah is watching? So every time you're going to commit a sin, start thinking, do I not know that Allah is watching? Allah is watching me right now. Inshallah, you'll, you'll 
stay away from that. It's your shahawat and your desires will start coming up. You want to do the sin, you tell yourself, wait, but Allah's watching me. <coughs> Inshallah, it'll go down. And of course, remind yourself that this dunya is short. The purpose of the dunya, the purpose of you being created is to get closer to Allah. If we don't have ikhlas, we won't have that. So we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us ikhlas. It's only tawfiq from Allah, but that intention is from us. We need to make the intention, we need to make the first step. This year will be a very beneficial year if we have ikhlas, and it will be a ruined year if we don't have ikhlas. So we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this gift. It's truly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وصلى الله تبارك وتعالى على خير خلقه محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين